Hey, how's it going? I'm Ben from Universal Audio, and today I'm joined by multi-Grammy winner Jakir King, who's recorded with Kings of Leon, Tom Waits, Nora Jones, and James Bay. And we're also joined by Jerry McPherson, a legendary Nashville studio session guitar player who's played on Faith Hill, Amy Grant, Dolly Parton, Nashville the TV show, and is a Taylor Guitars artist. So we're going to give you some tips, some tricks for recording acoustic guitar, both with a microphone and also just plugging in direct. Really before we dive in, Shakir, what, what are some of the things that you think about even before you start selecting microphones and kind of getting going on a recording? Um, well, I mean, it, it's about being familiar with the song and, and the genre and, and sort of more specifically, I guess, what you're going to do with the production and the arrangement, you know, mm -hmm. how, how big the voice uh, and space of the guitar is going to be and what it's going to occupy. I'm always like a source first yeah. uh, recordist, and so you make a guitar choice based on the part and how it's going to serve the song. Um, and then I, you know, look for microphones that are going to accentuate and help me find those, that pocket or, you know, is it... Is it narrow? Is it wide? You know, what's it? What's it going to be paired with? So, yeah. it's it, it, there's a lot of facets to it, but it, you know, you kind of have to start with uh, the song mm -hmm. and where you think you're going to go with it in terms of what the acoustic guitar's role yeah. in the recording is going to be. So for this first example, if we were going to record, say, like a singer-songwriter, you know, something delicate, very exposed, you know, maybe just acoustic guitar and vocal, uh, have, what mics would you pick for something like that? In this particular case, kind of sort of set up for that where we have uh, a large diaphragm uh, con uh, condenser mic and a, a, a pencil condenser mic. The pencil condenser mic is on the brighter side mm -hmm. of the capture of the instrument. Um, and it's also, for me, most of the time I want to choose microphones that have two different uh, lens captures, you know, this, this, yeah. one's, this one not only is it focused on uh, the body of the guitar that Jerry's playing, um, but, it's, um, but it's, it, it's a warmer sound because it's a tube mic. Mm -hmm. um, the, the smaller condenser, it's on the brighter side yeah. where, where the, the fingering is happening. Um, and it's going to get a little bit more of the transient, brighter side of the guitar. Now, in a stereo picture with this, I, I have the I can pan it out and it'll give it a little bit of dimension left to right because it's not the same thing on both sides. Yeah. Um, or you know I could you can kind of collapse this down uh, because the two microphones have a different sound. Um, I can I can lean on the brighter one mm. a little bit more for clarity. Yeah. Or I can you know I can lean on this one a little bit more for more body. Yeah, so you're getting this three-dimensional, you're getting some depth to the sound, and it's you're getting some left and right information as well that's not just, you know, phase issues. Yes, the beauty of picking the two different mics that have the two different kind of signatures, I guess, if you will, mm -hmm. um, is that you don't have the same information on both sides, and that helps create a yeah. little bit of that, a little bit of that depth. Well, that's awesome. And so, where do you have them pointed at the guitar specifically? Twelfth fret to, to sort of the neck meets the mm -hmm. body is generally a good place to mic a guitar just in general. Yeah. You know, that's kind of where you get this. In this area is where sort of the biggest, the most balanced full picture is. So, if you had to pick just one spot, that would be the spot to start. It it definitely is. But I've purposely cho chosen a small diaphragm microphone that's not going to catch as much of the, the bigger, warmer, slower frequencies. I've got uh, this, the 67, um, sort of an equal distance on the body side of the guitar yeah. from, the, from the, the hole. Mm -hmm. Because if, when you get a microphone in front of this, it just, this is, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of low frequencies that come out of there, the resonance of the body, and that can be a very cloudy spot. Mm -hmm. So I've kind of got this... Uh, over here. If I ha was unfamiliar with the guitar mm -hmm. um, or just wasn't exactly sure, I'd, ha I'd have him play and I'd kind of move my ear around mm. and I'd find the, the spot to my ear that, that sounded like a balanced place to put the microphone for, for what I was after. With two microphones, would you f try to find two balanced spots or would you deliberately kind of throw them a little bit more, a little bit brighter, a little bit warmer? I would. Yeah. But, but, but the ear test will also tell me that I don't, I don't want too much, especially in the low mid-range, overlapping frequencies mm -hmm. because then that's going to get me into a place where I've got to be doing EQ mm -hmm. to manage the relationship. And then when you, start, when you start having to EQ a lot, then you get other phase yeah. issues going on. 
cool. So, you know, we've kind of got the mics kind of already set up in a configuration like you like. But as you mentioned, like the source is arguably the most important part, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so the source today would be, what, what kind of guitar are we playing on, Jerry? Uh, this is a Taylor Grand Pacific. Mm -hmm. And for the singer-songwriter uh, type setup, it, it's nice to have a mahogany sides and back. It's a warmer, it's a little bit of a vintage sound too, mm -hmm. which for Nashville type things with the show and everything that they would do, yeah. they were always going for that kind of singer-songwriter on a vintage, you know, warm guitar like that. Can we, do you mind playing a little bit for us, Sure, so we sure, can hear? sure. Sounds beautiful. It does, yeah. And so, as you were playing that back, I kind of they were initially both down right down the middle. So I kind of opened up the panning as we were kind of listening okay. back yeah. there while you were playing. And yeah, you can just hear instantly like that. You just get a touch of stereo ness to it, but it's yeah, it just leaves this nice little pocket. Yeah, in the middle. pocket for the vocal. Yeah. What can we do to you know tweak this sound or kind of take it in a, in a different direction that's still true to like a singer songwriter, but um, you know just slightly different variation. I think probably a, a thing to do is if just leave this configuration it as it is just for the moment, and if we could just maybe put them back in mono mm -hmm. and, and and do the rebalancing as I described, where you know we lean on the brighter mic for a second versus mm. you know just to kind of show that, yeah. and then perhaps I I would just like to move the mics a little bit. We'll see how just those small adjustments can really make a big difference in the capture. Yeah, awesome. Uh, do you want to do the adjustment? Sure. You want to throw on the headphones and do the adjustment? No mm. problem. Let you drive. Yeah, that's really cool. I, I can even hear hear it through the speakers here. Yeah, like nice. that's, you know, as you bring down that body, yeah, you just hear more of the bright. You hear the pick a lot more when it was uh, more on the small diaphragm, and then as you swap that around, it just becomes this big, warm, just uh, big round kind of sound. Absolutely. I think maybe the thing to do is let's let's turn off the sixty-seven, mm -hmm. um, and then uh, I'll put the headphones on, and if Jerry, if you play, we'll I'll. I'll uh, I'll, I'll adjust this uh, this uh, small diaphragm condenser. We'll get it closer, and, yeah. and I'll sort of move it around and, and just a little bit, and you can just hear how much difference it makes. <laughs> so it was subtle like it some, some movements were subtle but then some all of a sudden you'd be like whoa that totally changed yeah i mean it, it is subtle but you know sometimes uh it's just a difference of uh especially if you're pairing this with other sounds it's just mm -hmm. like the little bit of masking that can happen and just a little bit of a frequency shift can be pretty mm -hmm. pretty dramatic and i know i know some of it was subtle i think when i got in a little closer and i i sort of exaggerated the position to over the body and yeah. then got got I was I was still focused on the twelfth fret, but I got over here a bit more. Got a little more distance. It got a little bit brighter. Mm -hmm. So so far, you know, we're just recording with the Apollo X8P. Uh, so we've been just using the regular Apollo preamps. Yes. Uh, is are preamps something that you also play with when you're recording acoustic guitars? Absolutely. Absolutely. Like I might choose an API for something that that I wanted to be uh, real clear. You know, if I wanted something that was a little bit tubier, vintage, um, might go for like a 610, mm -hmm. or you know, if we were to do something that was a, a little bit 
rockier, I wanted a little bit more edge to it, I might go with a Neve. Uh -huh. If I wanted to fill out this condenser, this small pencil condenser mic, mm -hmm. um, the Neve is going to kind of give me a little bit of that weight to it. Yeah. Um, you know, on, on the other hand, the, the API on the, the, the 67 that's on the body is going to, it's not going to over accentuate the, the low frequency stuff I've got going on and make it cloudy. It's, it's going to keep it articulate and bright. That's interesting. That's a cool way of pairing together because, again, you're just thinking of transients and tonality and kind of mix and matching a little bit brighter, a little bit faster with something a little bit slower, a little bit warmer, or accentuating the brightness and speed with something that is bright and fast. Yes, exactly, exactly. Let's put a Neve on the, the, the uh, 184 okay. and let's put the API on, Perfect. on the 67. How do you do? You do EQing for acoustic guitars on the way in, or do you kind of save that till you're in the mix later? I almost always, even if I don't actually uh, in actively use the EQ, a lot of times I'll just put the EQ circuit in. Okay. Just because it's going through the extra electronics, mm -hmm. kind of it creates harmonics. You know, because we don't really record on tape anymore. Yeah. And so we're missing sort of a little bit of that that stuff that's going on. So I just kind of want to get some more electronics involved, more color, more, yep. more character. So Jerry, if you don't mind playing a yeah. little bit, I'll set the gain as, we're, as you're playing through. Can you play that same bit again? I'm just going to turn these off okay. so we can hear it with and without. Yeah. And then one more time with them on. That's wonderful. Right? Yeah. It's such an obvious difference right there. Yeah. I think that putting the API on the 67 is a nice choice, but I also it, it, it's also, in some ways, it's kind of bumped up some of the low mid-range. I might scoop out a little bit of that. It sort of seems like it's like two, 300 that kind of came up a little bit. Uh -huh. Might be able to pull that back a little bit as, with that. Nice. Yeah, and I was going to ask you if, if you're working with an artist that comes in, like I'm using a, this is a Taylor, almost like a Fender Heavy for a, lack of a better comparison. Uh, if they're using more like, I br sometimes I'll, I'll bring a thinner pick for a wispier sound, you know? Totally oh, wow. different, and you might have to EQ for that. Well, that's a, that's a very good point, and, and at my studio, we have a, we have a soup bowl <laughs> full of picks, yeah. and we, you know, we spend time, yeah. uh, as, we're, as we're narrowing in on the sound, mm -hmm. selecting the right pick. So to answer the question, I'd probably like you know I'd probably focus on the pick choice mm, first, okay. yeah. and then yeah, then it, to EQ around what to get yeah. it even further along. Mm -hmm. yeah. Let's say we wanted to do something a little bit rootsier, a little you know kind of like a folky blues. Uh, what would you? How would we change this configuration around to match a different um, destination? Sure, you know I'd probably start by getting rid of that. Let's move this mic, and I might add something. Uh, I'll add a different second mic, yeah, um, like a 57 or a bullet mic mm -hmm. that's just really focused on the mid-range, okay, uh, and just it's not as pretty, mm -hmm. um, but it's going to give it like a little bit of a, I don't know, a little bit earthier, more organic. Okay, just kind of give it a little danger. Jerry, what are you playing on now? Uh, this is a grand concert body. Uh, style and so it's there's the smallest body that Taylor makes and this is more of the for a rootsy blues type thing so it's a good choice for that mm -hmm. uh, it's nice and per, you know percussive because for blues and rootsy stuff you you want a little bit of grease in there yeah and uh, but it still is it's, it's it's mahogany top and mahogany sides and back mm -hmm. so it still keeps a warmth to it with that being too clacky and too bright yeah you know you don't want to poke anyone in the eye with a tone yeah right. Yeah. 
Nice. And Shakir, so we've still got the 67, like you said, and then you've thrown up a SM57. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I've got 15 of those at home, so <laughs> it's good to see one of those made out here as well. Absolutely. And it's, you know, 57s are, are, it's a de- can be a decent way to record an acoustic guitar just all on its own, especially if it's a, a, dense, a denser track where the acoustic guitar doesn't need to really have much bottom end. Mm-hmm. And it just needs to find a place somewhere around the voice. Yeah, you know, uh, just really fit that mid range. But I've placed it on the body side mm-hmm. because um, I want to try to get a little bit of the 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 warmer mid range as opposed to what the the fifty seven is a little bit more, more bitey. Uh, bitey and, and, and uh, voiced for. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so then we move the sixty seven over to this sort of twelfth fret yep. position. Now it's a tube mic again. You know, it's gonna have it's gonna have that warmth. Uh, it's a large diaphragm. It's gonna going to capture a lot of the body of the guitar, but mm-hmm. it's this is where we're going to hear the, the brightness and the openness of this mic. Um, it's going to extend and it's, it's going to feel a little bit more extended than the 184 because the 184 is more of like a, a 6 to 8K kind of brightness. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The, the 67's like 10 to 12. Gotcha. So it's going gonna, it's gonna to feel a little bit more organic, a little less focused, but it's going to feel open. Mm-hmm. Putting this mic in that spot where the, the guitar is a little more balanced, the 67 is put in that spot, and then so we're kind of, that 57 is going to fit a little bit of the, the space that's sort of left. That's left by, by the 67. Exactly, yeah, yeah. I kind of have in my mind from listening what I need to sort of do, so I'm going to get in front of him and kind of do a little bit of listening mm-hmm. um, and see, because this is a you know, different guitar, it's got a different voice, it projects sound differently. Yeah, different so, approach. Yeah. yeah. So, so if you... Okay, so you know, all I really did um, is I got the 67 a little bit away from the sort mm. of the 12th fret, fret position and out on the neck. I kind of it's now looking at that spot that we mentioned earlier. It's, right. it's where the neck meets the body. It just kind of uh, and that's to get away from some of that Percussive, re- percussiveness yeah. and where it feels a little bit more mm-hmm. balanced. Can we play with uh, balances now? Yeah, and let's so we can we can show. Show where the the 57, like the real, well, let's just mute. Let's actually just listen to them individually. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we'll play with the balance and we can, we can hear, um, hear how, again, you know, I've chosen two different microphones. You know, they, they, they have merit on their own. Yeah. But they work, they will work well together and they don't, they're not overlapping too, too much. They're, do, they're doing a little bit of an individual job. Mm-hmm. Let's hear that. We started with the 57, very, very mid-rangey, usable sound, and probably would fit really nicely in with uh, some brighter electric guitars, mm-hmm. and kind of you know sit between where the bass is yeah. and, and some some sort of more brighter uh, electrics. Um, you know, the 67's more high fidelity, and then just played with the balance where when the 57 was louder, it was it still had a it had a lower fi kind of uh, guttural sound feeling to it but the 67 having a little bit of 67 in there kind of kind of kept it hanging in there frequency wise and then you know the 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 opposite where the 67 um, has that clarity and fidelity but like putting a little bit of the 57 in there just kind of gave it a little little bit of personality a little bit of grit yeah Yeah. and then and then I and then I dumped them real wide um, just to show that even though the mics are 
pretty close mm -hmm. um, that, you know, you can get them real wide and, and the image didn't go, you know, you didn't hear the sounds, the, the two sounds we've just described about the microphones dramatically wide mm -hmm. um, because they're so close together. They're sharing kind of a common uh, look at the instrument, um, but, but it does give us a little bit of space. Yeah. And would you commonly, you know, so if it's drums, bass, and single guitar, would you do that sort of, add that touch of width to it, or would you kind of move the guitar to a side that let it speak around the drums and bass? Well, that's a good question. I mean, I think uh, typically, uh, as, as a recordist, I'm, uh, I'm definitely like to make decisions and, and commit to things. Mm -hmm. So I would, I would probably decide how I wanted to balance these microphones, and I'd probably print them to one track. Okay. You know, we're set up this way. Um, now, but that's, you know, that's if I didn't quite know where we, it, it, that's if I knew we were gonna go, where we were going to go and had a very specific idea in my mind. Yeah. Um, so for today's demonstration, I'm trying to show the flexibility. Um, and that if I, I mean, if, if I wasn't sure, I might print them separately mm -hmm. and maybe defer some of this decision making to, to later. Um, would you mind throwing in a couple six tens? Yep. And just sh sort of show what, like a, a, a more vintage. So how we've we've kind of got a semi high fi more more modern kind of blues capture, but we choose these older mic pre's. It's going to give us a. It's going to take us back a little bit. Yeah. So yeah, Trey, if you can play a little bit, I'll set the gain. Let's let's just, let's back off this. I think the 57 is probably going to be okay, but let's can we throw um, like um, let's throw an LA 2A mm -hmm. on the 67. Now an LA 3A is also uh, a really good choice. I'm choosing an LA 2A just because I'm trying to I'm trying to push it a little bit towards an older sound. So I'm not trying to right. compress the whole thing. I'm just trying to just trying to tame the beast a little bit. Like, right, right. Take off that 30 percent. Now we've kind of warmed it up a little bit with the preamp, knocked back a little bit of those transients with the with the LA two A, and just contained contained the beast a little yeah, bit. Yeah, and, and I feel it doing some of the work for me where I don't feel like I'm having to sustain stuff out as much, and mm -hmm. that's that's really nice. Nice. So if we wanted to keep kind of driving down this direction, what other adjustments could we uh, could we make? Um, well, let's. I would I would be interested to change out the sixty seven for a ribbon mic. Uh huh. Um, and um, to sort of play with maybe where the 57 is going to go, and let's let's pull off, let's at least pull off the, the LA2A. LA yeah. Yep. Yep. Cool. So let's take that out. I'll mute the 67. Let's let's swap that out. Okay. Cool. So that's that's a Royer uh, 121, correct? Royer 121, yep. Mm -hmm. So this is a ribbon microphone that's in a figure eight pattern. So it's hearing in front of it and behind it. Yep. Uh, and what's the characteristic of a ribbon compared to a, like a large diaphragm condenser? Well, it's going to be it's going to be a little bit darker mm -hmm. sounding. It's going to have a smoother top end. When he's playing that percussive stuff, it's not going to the transients aren't going to jump as much mm -hmm. as they were in the '67. Gotcha. Um, and you know, just the, the way that a ribbon mic works is just gonna it's just gonna be a little bit of a smoother capture. But then we mentioned it on the sixty seven, we didn't actually do it, but i I've introduced a figure eight mic, so we're getting a little bit more uh, ambience in it. And it's gonna feel a little bit more back in time, a little more vintage. Yeah, Jay, do you mind auditioning yeah. these for us?
so now we're really leaning on the rib, and what's the 57 doing along with it? it it's just it's just filling in that same mid-range job, but mm -hmm. because the 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 121 is not as extended, mm -hmm. um, and it is it does have a warmer mid-range compared to the 67. I just don't need as much of that character mic in there. Yeah. Um, I mean, it definitely is a nice part of the picture, mm -hmm. um, and um, you know, 57 or like a bullet mic is even like an old salt shaker mic. Um, you know, just something kind of a little bit mid fidelity, kind of crusty. Yeah. It's just always nice to just put a little bit of a little bit of flavor in there. Mm -hmm. yeah. So the guitar we're playing on now also has got a DI. Yes. Would you find yourself using a DI for recording like this as well? Oh, sure. Yeah, yeah, abso absolutely. I know I do also. Mm -hmm. you know, just to sneak it in for some mid-range and stuff, some, for some clarity, you know, to, in the mid-range. You know? Yeah. Well, let's, uh, let's take a listen to what that sounds like. Do you want to listen to just the DI, or should we blend the DI in with the mics that we're using? So let's blend it in. Yeah. Um, and it might, you know, it might actually influence taking the 57 down a little bit more. Mm -hmm. And then let's just sort of like, let's tip the balance all the way to the DI and then let's just listen to the DI. The other good thing about, about the DI is that since there's no room involved, it's a good mic to throw some distortion on or, you know, to gack out a little bit because you're not going to be accentuating the room, you know. Yeah. And you're bringing that in underneath. You yeah. Know, so you've already got your picture, your main picture here. Yeah. Sneaking a little bit, you know, a little crustier, trash, a little, yeah, yeah that trash kind that, of mic, yeah. you know. But with the DI, you get that presence and that immediacy that you don't get yeah. outside the body. Exactly. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Let's hear what it sounds like. So now I'm going to throw a little bit of a curveball at you. Say you're in a scenario where you, you don't have enough inputs to have, you know, two microphones and a DI, and all you, you've got a band around you, and so basically your only option is to use the DI. What are some of the tricks that you would use to go DI only and still get a great guitar sound? Well, let's do a little bit of tone shaping. I mean, I know that this guitar has a little bit of EQ on it, mm -hmm. so. Um, I think the EQs on there are just like a top and a bottom. Top and a bottom. So let's turn those up, up which, which is essentially, which is essentially kind of bringing our yep. our mid range down. Yeah. Um, let's uh, let's put uh, a six ten on there. Yep. Just a tube, older tube pre. It's going to soften things just a little bit. Just for interest's sake, let's um, let's throw an eleven seventy six on there. Mm -hmm. The black face with the blue stripe is a, is a kind of a limited. Edition uh, 1176 that UA made that has a two to one ratio, which is unique to an 1176, and so that's a good choice because I'm not really looking to add a lot of compression. I'm just adding, looking to add a little control and tone. Yeah. So um, this is, is, you know, no lie. This is actually my favorite 1176 plugin as well, both for the two to one, but also the slow attack feature. Which mm. kind of, if you're looking for more transients, being able to go to the slower attack, you just get a let, let a little bit more of those through. Let's just for the for the moment. Yep. Let's bypass the 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 you know the compressor and uh, pre that we put in there. Uh -huh. So let's just so we can just hear the the input. change and let's see kind of let's let's do let, one change at a time let's focus on the source right. let's let's sort of make an improvement there and then let's see what we can add with this okay. great did you add an equal amount of top and bottom uh, I pulled back a little bit of the bottom up towards the end can I hear the top flat and just a tiny bit of bottom yep. bumped up just just out of curiosity Good call. Just just a, just a tiny bit of that top now, yeah. and then let's put, let's throw these things on. Mm -hmm. At first, it was a little bit glassy sounding to yeah. me, and I know that this is this the choices we made are going to kind of like work against that. It's just it's for me, it's always pairing things together and working them against one another. Mm -hmm. um, so so let's let's hear the uh, let's hear the combination now. Okay. 
So would you put that, uh, that top boost back flat? Okay. I think if we just could add just a hint of room tone, not not reverb per se. Yeah. Um, I know that the ocean wave room. Yeah, that's might, that's, that's a go-to right there, right? Might be might be good, and that's gonna, you know, that's gonna allow us to just add a little bit of dimension around it without it feeling like it's in a big space or like we've put it in some hall reverb. Add some know? air. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, you know, this is obviously a mono track at the moment. So rather than inserting it on channel one, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to use a send, okay. send it to an aux, and then on that aux, insert the ocean wave. So we're hearing both the direct on channel one and then the return, which will be the ocean way. Cool. Um, and so what's interesting about this, right, is you've got two modes. You've got remic and reverb. Uh, which one do you typically roll with for something like I'd like, like to hear them both, actually. I'd yeah. Like, yeah, I'd like to hear them uh, hear them both because the remic I may, may give us the might thing, be the thing, thing right? We're after, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I've already got set up. We're in Ocean Way, Room A, in the guitar spot. Uh, the near and mid microphones are turned on, um, and so yeah, now we're hearing kind of everything together. That's quite a bit right now, as far as. Nice. That's awesome. It's fun to play with. It too. is. It's fun to play too. I was like, the other thing you can do too is you can kind of adjust the distance of those microphones. Uh, do you mind just playing yeah. again? And I'll move them. You hear that dimension, right? No. Yep. This is a great sound, and there's, it's, you can easily transform it. Mm -hmm. you know, whereas the microphones, you, know, you can certainly transform them, but it, it's, it's not really quite the, uh, as isolated of a source. Yeah. All right, so this is, it's been a really cool, you know, kind of a bluesy, rootsy vibe. Uh, now, if we want to take it more like a rock, pop kind of scenario, again, fitting into a busy track, uh, what are some of the things that you would do differently for that scenario? Well, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to change both these mics mm -hmm. um, because in a, in a denser, sort of more aggressive, harder-hitting track, um, the, these sounds are going to just kind of get eaten up yeah. because it's a, it's a little bit softer, a little bit more mid-range. I, I need something with a, um, uh, a, a top end that's, uh, that's balanced and can really, really kind of hang in there. And I, I'm just going to go for a different character mic mm -hmm. than the 57. Awesome. So yeah, let's uh, let's swap out some guitars, uh, swap in some new mics, and uh, try it for a third sound. Okay, great. Awesome. All right. So new guitar, new microphones. Uh, Jerry, what uh, what did we change out here? Uh, this is the Taylor Grand Auditorium, uh, rosewood back and side, spruce top. And I call this as, as seen on TV. It's their most popular model. Uh -huh. You see it everywhere. You hear it everywhere. You've, yeah. You've heard it all the time, you know. And so, Jaquie, you've matched this with uh, the MA200, correct? Yep. Yes. So it's another large diaphragm tube condenser. It is. Um, and so why would you choose you know, a, a large diaphragm over a small diaphragm for this kind of scenario? Uh, it's, a, it's a modern mic. Mm -hmm. So it has, it, has a little bit, it has a modern voicing. Uh, the top end is a little bit more extended, you, you know, like where the 67, like I said, is kind of up in that 10, 12 range. Uh -huh. This has all of that, and maybe even a little bit above it, but it also kind of comes down into the 6, 8K range. It's, just, it's, a little bit, it's, it's, it's a little bit broader of a focus in the top end. Yep. Um, the bullet mic 
is really is is kind of it's it's a low it's low it's voiced lower than the 57. Like the 57 was our sort of our character dirt dirtier mic. This is just kind of like it's got grumpy, just kind of dirty low mids, <laughs> you know. And uh -huh. and so it's gonna it's gonna give me a little bit of that electric guitar attitude yeah. that like that that amped up yeah. sort of attitude and where. The Mojave has that tight bottom end I was talking about. This this is kind of kind of give me something to pair with that, mm -hmm. where where it's it's really clean and tight down there. And this is going to give me a little bit of that amped up dirt dirty sound. Uh, I like to record in mono basically and mix in stereo. Mm -hmm. So I don't uh, you know I don't want two mics that sound the same to give me a stereo image. I want character because then it also gives me the option to totally flip the script and rebalance the yeah. character of of what I'm recording. Totally. I'll let you play a couple bars or right. something and so maybe play a little bit longer and then I'll jump in and start to play right. with the balance. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm gonna. I just want to, like I was saying, I want to just move this mm -hmm. Mojave a little bit. Now I'm gonna move the bullet a little, a little bit as well, just so I can. See, this is the part of the process that I always see. I, I never get to see this in. Yeah, the, you're always on the other side of the glass. <laughs> I'm on the right? other side of the glass. Uh huh. Yeah. Well, and something else I've noticed you do, Shakir, is you, you keep everything on one plane. Yeah. So it, you know you don't have one mic you know a few inches closer to the sound hole and you know one a little bit further away. You're kind of keeping them in the same dimension from the guitar, and I assume that's so you don't aren't causing phase issues, yeah, right? Yeah, exactly. Cool. So now, so what did you do? You do? It looks like you brought them just down closer to the sound hole, yeah. kind of like a, or yeah. So now the Mojave is more of that join rather than the twelfth fret, and the yeah. bullet's a little closer to sound hole. Yeah, just a just a just. Uh, you know, it, now that might that might sound might be great, but it's contextual. And so, since we're kind of in isolation here, and this is all we're listening, it's just it's just a hair aggressive for me. So yeah. I was just like, I just kind of want to hear it. Just want to hear it a little bit. Just warm it up, just a little bit. Just take a little bit of that off there. Yeah. Let's take a listen. Wow. <laughs> so <laughs> the difference, a couple. It was yeah. what, like a couple of inches, yeah. Yeah. like. Makes just it almost world. sounded like a switched out guitars or something. Yeah, yeah, it really did. Hmm. All right, so we got a great mic sound, but again, we've got this DI mm -hmm. available to us. So how how would you fit the DI into this sort of picture? I think let's start with it in isolation, so we can see what it sounds like. Uh huh. Um, so we can kind of reverse it. Let's yeah. let's see let's see what our DI sounds like on its own. And you want to keep? So we still have the six ten and the eleven seventy six that we had in the last setup. Should we leave those on as yeah, well? Yeah, why not? Let's see let's see where that starts. Great. Okay. Okay, I th I think uh, uh, compressor is probably the right choice, but I think this the the, uh, six the ten. six ten is not the not the thing. Mm -hmm. Let's um, you know just because just for interest sake, uh, uh, because it's something we haven't checked out, and it's uh, one of the unison priests. Can we just hear what the helio sounds like? Yeah. Hmm. You talk about rock and roll. You're talking about the helios, yeah. right? Yeah. Led Zeppelin and a lot of other, a lot of other stuff. <laughs> All right. Yeah, you can just play a little bit. And I'll
And man, it, you heard that impact right away, the kind of presence to the sound. And it was also cool being able to get in there with the mid-range and just you were sucking out a little bit of, looks like about 700. So a little bit of 700. And I threw the, you know, there's the, the trick that a lot of people know about. It's just like, you just turn the low frequency on, mm -hmm. but you don't actually engage it. You know, it's just sort of a similar mm -hmm. thing with just like engaging so through it. In EQ Passing circuit it in there. And so yeah, this is put, you know, all this combined, it's kind of pushing the 1176 a little bit differently. So that way, you know, you're strumming harder and it's kind of holding it a little bit more of a, a spot. It's holding it in place. Yeah, I'm being a little bit more aggressive with the compressor um, because, you know, we're doing a pop rock track. You yeah. know, this is, this, the, the, the density of the track around it's probably going to be a lot more. You're going to have Mm -hmm. You know, powerful drums and stuff, and so you kind of want that guitar to just that acoustic guitar to just sit there and hang in. Yeah, hang and it on feels for good to life. play too, too. Also, mm -hmm. it feels like it feels like you're getting support, right? Right, right. And so now we've just been listening to just the DI by itself. Uh, would you combine this back with the mics? Would you add that ocean way to? Oh, I'd it? love to hear a little bit of the rim in there. Yeah. yeah. You know what that reminds me of? It reminds me of when you're, you finish tracking and you go back and, hey, let's add acoustic to this, and they put you out in the big room. Mm -hmm. And you can hear a little bit of the big room rather than being in a small ISO room, yeah. which is always a blast. And that's where everything sh should be recorded anyway, and, mm -hmm. yeah, out in the big room. You know. well, I mean, and that's, you, know, you, you just echoed exactly what this plugin's doing, right? Yeah. It's kind of, it's put basically the taking the source, putting it out in the middle of the room, yeah. and then letting you move the mics around the room to really complement that sound. Yeah. That's awesome. So let's keep it DI focused, and and then we'll bring the mics in okay. uh, underneath the DI, just as a just as a different right. just a different look. Yeah. Yeah. Let's right. try it. I really like the way the DI sounds. I do too. <laughs> yeah, no, I really, this I really, scenario, like it, it, it's adding, it's making such a large sound out it, of it. It's a, it's definitely, definitely contributing a, a, a good thing. Yeah. Yeah. So, what, what would be some tips for people who are recording guitars and they don't have a Grammy-winning engineer there to help them and move the mics around? Like for recording yourself, what are some tips there? Uh, one thing I, I would do is find a, a song, a source, a reference mm -hmm. that you can kind of bounce back and forth you know, between and hear how that guitar or whatever sounds and it's something that you're shooting for. Yeah. Uh, and like what we've talked about, you know, first having a, a great instrument like this where there's not mechanical problems involved, you're not making mechanical problems with buttons or extraneous stuff, squeaky chair, but al also recognizing, you know, like record it and listen to it somewhere else uh, to see, you, you might have a room that's, that's just not going to work and you have to get a little bit closer or whatever and just experiment. Mm -hmm. That's the biggie is just to experiment. You know? Yeah. Well, a, a good rule I learned one time was, you know, set up how you think you want to set it up. And then even if you already love it, at least try one or two other places just to prove to yourself that, that one that was, was the spot. spot. That's a good one, yeah. yeah. Change your strings. Mm-hmm. Yeah, don't, all that. Don't don't be afraid to pull, bring out the bowl of picks and yeah. go diving yep. in there yeah, for exactly. something different. Yeah, like all these things can have such have such a radical effect on the sound that it's it's worth the extra like five ten minutes tops to yeah. like kind of experiment a touch before Absolutely. you really put your heart into a take. And don't try to do too, too much. EQ wise, compression wise, mm -hmm. uh, I've I've talked to so many engineers that you know they you know I've asked them you know like how'd you make that break you yeah. know skill level wise not not so much getting gigs and stuff but skill level wise and they said when i got out of the way mm. you know and and stopped to do trying to turn so many things you know too many trying to grab too many knobs yeah because yeah. it, it can be attractive right yeah it is <laughs> yes, yeah sir. gear is fun it is fun <laughs> 
Awesome. Well, Jakir, thanks again for sharing all of your knowledge and kind of really taking us through not just like do this, do that, but more of the thought process and kind of, you know, how you approach recording acoustics. This was very eye-opening for me. Uh, my pleasure. Thank yeah, you. and I'm sure our audience is going to love it. And Jerry, thanks for being our guinea pig. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, also, man, it's great. Your wealth of experience from being on all these sessions, like I, it was really helpful to get both sides of the equation in the same spot to really kind of break open uh, the techniques and you know these tricks for recording and getting great results with, with guitars. Awesome. Awesome. And so also thank you to Taylor Guitars for uh, working with us on this video. It was such a pleasure to have amazing sounding instruments that not only sound good just by themselves, but also have kind of a variety of sounds. Um, and of course, thanks to Universal Audio for making this video happen. Uh, if you guys want to learn more about any of the products that you saw here today, um, or just learn more about recording in general, head to uaudio.com, and I'll see you next time.